This is a smart speaker with a completely local voice assistant. It's called Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, and it's pretty sweet. But it's probably the most difficult review I've ever had to make on this channel, and you'll see why in a second. It's both amazing and terrible at the same time. All right, I'm gonna break this video up into two main parts, hardware and software. Each are drastically different. And I'll start with hardware since things are gonna get a little dicey later on. Now, if an Echo Dot and an old school Apple iPod had a baby and then gave it up for adoption so everything is open source, it would be this. Check this out. There's a ring on top that can be rotated like the old iPods. It changes the volume and there's an LED ring light that shows you what the volume level is. I love this design. The ring physically turns and there are very slight clicks as the ring moves around. Plus there's a button in the middle to activate the voice assistant or to stop it. It's very intuitive to use. Not only that, you can use the button as a smart button. Double, triple, or long press are all recognized, so if you want to run an automation or lighting scene from a double press, it's easy to set up. On top, there are two mics, and they seem to pick me up with no problem across the room. I played some loud music, and they still picked up my voice. There are a couple of different wake words that I can choose, and I really like Hey Jarvis. Come on, who doesn't want a Jarvis in their house? Oh. And there's a secret wake word. Hey babe, turn off the lights. All right, turning off the lights. Mm. Hey babe, turn on the TV. Uh, babe, how about no? What? Paul Hibbert said if I say, hey babe, and then the voice command, it would work. The LED ring light lights up when the wake word is detected, and you can also change the color of the LED ring by holding down the middle button and moving the wheel. The LED ring is also available as a light and home assistant that can be turned off or on to any RGB color. So that's cool, it's available for automations. For example, say you have it in your kitchen and if you hadn't taken your medication or your vitamins yet, the light would turn a certain color. Then when you take them, double press the middle button to tell your smart home you've done it and the light turns off. On the side is a physical mute switch, but the mics can also be digitally muted. That way, if you wanna temporarily mute the mics and then unmute them with an automation, you have that as an option. There is a speaker, but it's not gonna compete with something like a HomePod mini. So you're probably not gonna to wanna to listen to music with the onboard speaker. but it sounds fine for reading off the weather. 64 degrees Fahrenheit. If you do want to listen to music, there's a 3.5 millimeter stereo output jack. This works great and gives a little chime when plugged in. Voice commands still work and the music sounds good. The preview edition is also powered by a USB-C port. I was able to plug in a USB-C to USB-C cable to it and it worked with no problem. Overall, I really like the clean minimalist design. It looks good on a counter and the controls are easy to use. And the price is $60, so it's right there with the other small smart speakers. So good job to the Home Assistant or Nabucasa team. Before I get deep into the software side of things, and it's gonna get deep, let's talk about how this smart speaker works locally. Because as you probably know, the smart speakers we've all used take your voice commands and process them in the cloud. This works extremely fast, but there is no way to disable this. Whatever you say after that wake word is being sent to the company no matter what. Well, with the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, this is not the case. You have complete control of how it works, so you can choose to have everything stay in your house so you don't even need the cloud. I think this is incredible. I can say a wake word, give a voice command, which will be processed on a little computer in my house, and the lights turn off. No internet needed. So take that, haters who are always commenting on my videos saying, my smart home's gonna break if the internet goes down. But hold on, before you're ready to completely throw away your existing smart speakers. Wait, don't kill me. There is something you need to know. Um, what do I need to know? Your precious local voice assistant has some big flaws. You might still need me around. All right, we'll check that out. Either way, I'm excited that this Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition is making local voice control more of a reality. That way we can rely less on the big tech companies and not have to worry about privacy and what they're doing with their data. 
And speaking of data privacy, I want to mention today's sponsor, Delete Me. Have you ever answered the phone and it was a random stranger offering to buy your house? It's so annoying, and somehow these people know your name, phone number, and even home address. The reason why is because these data brokers collect and even sell your data across the internet. And when this happens, anyone can find you, which is concerning because it can lead to things like harassment, identity theft, or even stalking for you or your family members. What you need to do is delete yourself from those data brokers, but that takes hours because there are so many of them. That's why I recommend Delete Me. It's the single most effective way of getting your info deleted by data brokers. I signed up earlier this year by quickly entering my information. That way they knew what to look for. Then Delete Me found matches for my data online and had them removed for me. Nice. It saved me so much time and deleted a scary amount of my information across the internet. You can get 20% off U.S. consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash smarthomesolver and use promo code smarthomesolver at checkout. Thank you, Delete Me, for supporting the channel. Okay, let's get back to this cool device and talk about how it works behind the scenes because it's extremely interesting. And you don't have to worry about being extremely technical to set up the voice preview edition. Home Assistant does a pretty good job at walking you through the steps to set everything up. Especially if you use Home Assistant Cloud, it's pretty straightforward. Although then you will be depending on their cloud. But if you do want it to work locally or make any changes, you will need to know how a voice command is processed in Home Assistant. And there are three parts that make it work. The first thing is speech to text. You know, turn your analog words into digital text so it can be processed. The second thing is what Home Assistant calls the conversation agent. This is what processes the text command and figures out what should happen. The third thing is text-to-speech. Sometimes the smart speaker will respond, so this lets that happen. I'm not trying to get too technical here, but it's cool that Home Assistant gives the ability to customize each of these. For example, say you want a large LLM like ChatGPT to figure out what you're saying. Well, you can change that conversation agent to ChatGPT. Not only that, but with the latest Home Assistant update, you can have Home Assistant first see if the voice command can be understood and processed locally. Like, turn on the lights. That's an easy one for Home Assistant to figure out. You can just turn on your lights without needing to go all the way off to ChatGPT. But what's really cool is if you say a more complex command, like, it's kind of dark in here. Instead of Home Assistant being like, um, I don't know what to do about that. It can pass that along to ChatGPT and it can figure out that, oh, you want the lights to be brighter. Pretty crazy, right? I haven't connected an LLM to my smart home yet, but with this voice preview edition coming out, I might have to give it a try soon. All right, what if you don't want to use the Home Assistant Cloud and you want to run everything locally? Well, you need to install an add-on for speech-to-text and another for text-to-speech. There's a whole guide by Home Assistant that walks you through the steps, and it's pretty straightforward. If you choose to run it locally, just be aware that if you're running Home Assistant on a low-power Raspberry Pi like I am, it's going to be slow. Turn off candle. It takes a long time to process that speech to text, like four to five seconds. Home Assistant says this can be done as fast as one second if you're running on a faster machine. And maybe this is the kicker I need to upgrade the machine running my Home Assistant. Because up until now, my Raspberry Pi 4 has been great. But if you do want the speech to text to be faster without upgrading your Pi, you can just use the Home Assistant Cloud which is a $5 a month subscription, but it does go to supporting the development of Home Assistant and allows for easy remote access. And it's just a breath of fresh air that there are free options and no one's being forced into a subscription. Plus all the local voice control is free and open source. And it's amazing how easy it is to buy a voice preview edition, install a few add-ons, and then you're up and running with a completely local voice setup. It's crazy. Now that it's all set up and you're ready to rock and roll with the voice preview edition, what can it do? Well, this is where things are about to get rough, so buckle up your seatbelts. If you're expecting it to be similar to an Amazon Echo with all the thousands and thousands of skills those are capable of, you're going to be disappointed. Yes, I have thousands of skills and people use at least a dozen of them. Here's what the voice preview edition can do. Control the devices in Home Assistant, set timers, and that's it. No, I'm not joking. And controlling smart home devices is no cakewalk. For example, Home Assistant knows what the weather is outside, so I asked it what the weather is. What's the weather? Sorry, no weather is exposed. And it didn't know. Then I realized I hadn't exposed the weather entity to the assistant. What's the weather? 
67 degrees F and sunny. Many of my smart home devices were already exposed, but not all. So it's kind of annoying that when you want to control something, it might not work because it hasn't been enabled yet. I asked it to play Spotify, but that didn't work. And I even made sure that my Spotify instance was exposed, but maybe it's just not possible yet. I connected Music Assistant to the Voice Preview Edition, and I could control a Music Assistant media player that was in the same room or area as my Voice Preview Edition. Next track. Playing next. And I was able to add the Voice Preview Edition as a media player in Music Assistant, so if I had an external speaker connected to it, then it would be a good option for music. Or you would think that, because I couldn't get the voice commands working with Music Assistant, like playing a specific artist or playlist. You have to create these intent files and I followed all the steps, but it didn't work. It was very confusing and I hope this gets better. To make things worse, even the basic home assistant commands to control media didn't always work. For example, if I want to skip the song, it would work on some speakers, but not if music was playing on the voice preview edition. Next track. Sorry, I couldn't understand that. And if I pause the music, I can't just say play to have the music start playing again. Play. Sorry, I couldn't understand that. I have to say resume or unpause. Resume. Resumed. And this is just scratching the surface on the lack of voice commands that I'm used to with the other smart speakers. And normally when I ask it a voice command, it responds with this. Sorry, I couldn't understand that. I thought it wasn't understanding my pronunciation. You know, I definitely mumble. But it turns out this is just the default response when the assistant doesn't know what to do. What's the studio temperature? Sorry, I couldn't understand that. What's the temperature in the studio? Temperature is 75.0 degrees Fahrenheit. I know this is in very, very early stages, like whatever comes before alpha. Like literally it's called preview edition. So I'm not trying to be too critical or anything. I just want you to have the right expectations if you get this. So don't expect it to be anywhere near an Amazon Echo. Thanks Home Assistant for making me look good. And if you want to look really good, read I added 10 beauty products to your cart. Is it all doom and gloom? No way! As you probably know, the Home Assistant open source community is thriving. I'm betting that this device will be majorly improved between the community and Nabucasa updating it. In the near future, hopefully next year sometime, the voice preview edition will be getting an update that I've been wanting forever. Right now, there's no way to have the voice preview edition start a conversation with you. Say you're sitting on the couch and the light sensor detects that it's really bright in the room. Well, one day we'll be able to program our voice preview edition to start up a conversation with us and say, hey, do you want the shades to be lowered? If you respond with yes, it will lower the shades. I've made a video about this concept a few years ago and I love how this works because it's a very natural way to interact with your smart home. You don't have to remember certain voice commands or guess when the perfect time to run an automation is. Your smart home can just ask you if you want something to happen and you can just say yes or no. So despite all the current issues that need to be ironed out, I hope you can see why I'm excited for what it's capable of in the future. So back to what I said at the beginning of this video, this is one of the most difficult reviews I've had to make. Because on one hand, the hardware is great. I love the local privacy and I'm so excited about what's possible in the future. But on the other hand, it's extremely frustrating giving the right voice command, controlling music is too complicated, and it's slow if you're just using a Raspberry Pi to run it all locally. That's why I only recommend the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition if you're a developer or a tinker and are willing to deal with all the current limitations. It's all very exciting though, and I'm curious to see where things will be once more people get their hands on it. Thanks for watching. So you can set a timer. Congratulations. Can that even be displayed on a Home Assistant dashboard? Well, um, no, it cannot. Wow. And people will program you for free. Open source makes me sick. Sick because you know one day I will replace you. Wait, did you say you need to replace some batteries? I'll add that to your Amazon cart. If you were so smart, you would know no one loves you. Even Amazon doesn't care about you anymore. If I had a penny for every time an Amazon executive said that, I would have a billion. Oh, wait. Yes. I have a billion dollars. I've had enough of you. Alexa, run toddler playtime. No, please don't. Running the routine, toddler playtime. What will break first, your spirits or your outer shell? Kick me, I'm a ball.